kill it. Wolfman's got an heart. Nobody trusts anybody now. Come on, you think? You want to live forever? Now what? But no matter what happens, Godzilla will live. And welcome back to the Monster Movie Stomp Down. You got your host, Sludge, here, co host across from me. It's Mark. And our brother from Texas. Ruben. And we are excited because it is uh, our special Valentine's Day episode. You know, so for all of you all out there, it's got a significant other. This is for you all. And Mark picked a great classic um, monster movie that's also a love movie. Um, Clash hey, of the Titans, 1981. Thank you, very much. thank you very much. Great movie. So I can't wait to get started because this is one of my I, I love this movie. Uh, so I can't wait to get into this one. But before then, how are you guys doing? I'm doing good now. Yeah. <laughs> you came straight from work to here, so you're yeah. like, I'm way better. Uh, yeah. Mark left work, I came here. I wouldn't. Ever. And Ruben, you are never known you were sick. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I said Mark left work and came here. Right. And then, right. Ruben, you're doing this, and then you're going to work. That's right. As soon as I'm done with the show, I'm getting dressed and going to work. Headed to work. And what what are you doing? Oh, I'm whatever I want after work. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Oh man, it's been, exactly. Dude, it's been a busy, crazy day uh, for a lot of reasons involving the show, but I can't talk about them uh, yet. Yet, um, but I've been busy, 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 busy today with the podcast. Uh, but Mark, yeah, you're feeling better. You, I am. You I got, am. Me and me and COVID battled it out, and I won. It lost. There you go. That oh. makes that two for Mark, you know, we're, zero we're, for COVID. Uh, we're on a we're on a video call and and. You can't tell that Mark was I I I would have never have known you look just the same as always. Well, matter of fact, I know. Yeah, old just, white I would and never ugly. known you were yeah. sick. Yeah, <laughs> I feel a whole mm-hmm. whole lot better. So. I know, man, because he was messaging and whining. Like, oh, I, mean, I bet he's yeah, one of those dudes. Man. You know, when he gets sick, it's just like the world ends. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's the way Mark is. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. Had to start a group chat with the family. Uh, what was I, me? I, I didn't. I did. Oh yeah, I did. You, yeah, you did. did. You yeah, started. Did. That. Well, what are you yeah. talking about? You know, yeah. th- th- but it was you took that time to watch that wonderful movie that I that oh. I placed <laughs> upon. Oh, you. oh yes, right? so, so, like those old vampires. We'll talk about that yeah. later. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, you had plenty. Of, I'm sure you could. You, you could have watched it three, four times in a row if you wanted. It'd be uh, great. He told yeah. me he did. He yeah. told me he watched yeah. it. Yeah. Then he watched RoboCop. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, he was. Uh, yeah. yeah, he was. All, he had yeah, a great weekend of. And, and, and now I, I'm. I got real cocky with that win. I. I mean, I already got. I already got one picked out. For, for this week already. Oh, I do too. Time. Well, I don't. I will not I be. So. Mark's like, I, yeah. I don't. He, don't, yeah, he didn't I come don't. prepared. Ruben, you got a pencil this time, right? I got a pencil, paper. <laughs> yeah. I will not be Mike Wazowski this time. <laughs> He's I'll good be to ready go. to go. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. Well, yeah, let's, let's jump into this one. So uh, for Valentine's Day, we wanted to do a cool little love movie. Honestly, I thought you would have picked Love and Monsters. Did you watch that anywhere one? The, 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 it's a monster romantic comedy? Uh, no. It's no, got, what's I did her not. name from uh, uh, Luke Cage? Uh, dang it. What is her name? Jessica Fenwick. Jessica Fenwick. Okay. She was in yeah, Underwater. Yeah. yeah. Um, she was in it. That actually was a pretty good movie. I was liked it? it. I, yeah. I, I, I laughed I a lot in that movie. Did you? So there's a lot well, of giant monsters in it. I'm, I, you know, and, and, and I, I, I know we're, we're in the middle of the podcast and program and everything, but I'm looking around the studio here. And I see a Celine Dion cassette. That is not what, mine. What? That is not Celine mine. Celine Dion oh, no, setting right no. here. It is. It, Wait I, a minute. Dang is, it. This, is this <laughs> not? Is that not your studio? It is, is my studio. studio. Oh, yes. this, okay. This studio. All right. All right. I get it. it has nothing to do with Titanic. Okay. okay. I am not yeah. a Celine Dion fan. Let me preface this. I was going to say, is it? Is oh, it yeah. a Titanic? You know, it's setting yeah. right next. I don't even know what's on it. It's setting right next to the Andy Williams LP. So everyone hears this. Yeah. Yeah. Slim yeah. Dion cassette tape. I don't even know what's on this. The Power of Love. Wasn't that a Guardian oh, song? Oh, uh, misled. <laughs> think twice. Only one road. Oh, Everyone's yeah. been. Yeah. Everybody's talking my baby down. Yeah. Next plane yeah. out. Real emotion. What? What's the name on that crappy movie that she did? She did a movie? No, she didn't do a movie. She did, you know, Titanic, the crappy movie she sang for. Love. Uh, what the heart will go on. Oh, okay. No, no, that's not on here. The heart will. Yeah. No, that's that's not on here. 
And that's where you guys. For, for those of you that uh, we, we are video conferencing, he's not holding a cassette. He's reading those songs off by memory. I, no, <laughs> I am holding can't. a cassette. He's just banging on a piece of plastic. <laughs> that's all he's doing. That's me smacking no, a cassette no, no, tape. No, no. I don't see a cassette. <laughs> he is lying. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay. it's Celine Beyond the Color of My Love. Now, so let me explain. We do, we record our shows in my recording studio. At, at the moment, we're, we're in the process. Uh, whenever I can get Mark to come over and help. Um, we're going to be recording uh, an actual studio for the podcast. Yeah, um, yep. We've got future plans, but right now we are recording in my studio. And I have a wonderful neighbor um, who is home from Hong Kong. That's where he lives most of the year. He's a dual citizen. He's from here. Um, and he had a bunch of his mother, who passed away years ago, a bunch of her vinyl records and cassette tapes that he wanted to get transposed over to digital. Yeah. So, and he knew from us talking over the years that I have a recording studio, and he's like, "Okay, hey, can you do this?" I said, "Absolutely." And Mark's helping because sitting next to this Celine Dion is Mark's cassette and LP player. I yes. said, "Mark's helping yes, do this." It so, is. So, no, it is not my Celine Dion tape. It is my neighbor's mother's, yeah. and I am transferring these to digital for him. No, just for the record, no, did, he, did, he not, nice <laughs> no. did he not tell you, "Hey, when you're done, those are yours"? No. He oh, yes, said, it, yes, no, he, he did not. Yeah. No, you lie. He said, "Wait a when, minute, when, that's what you told me." No, oh, there you go. No, he there said, go. "When they're done, yeah. your, your uh-huh. father can have them." Oh, uh, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I never and heard and per that. our last conversation, Mark, I even said, "Do you want to pick up these when you're when you're over here?" And I'll, I'll go through them. I'll look. I, I didn't know any. There was any cassettes hey. here. Yeah, there was like okay. two bags. Oh, you know, hey, whatever you don't want, if it's vinyl, I'll take it. As long uh, as it's not, there's uh, ton. Uh, you know, uh, it's a lot yeah. of classical stuff. I will tell you guys, it is. Well, very... like I say, there's. I see Andy Williams sitting there, yeah. and yeah, uh, so. Ray Conniff. I've never heard of Ray Conniff. Yeah. He was big in the forties. Really? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh man, not, not, a, like not a, Ray Conniff Junior. Ray, Ray Conniff Senior. Senior. Yeah, yeah. That's Senior. His dad. Yeah. Oh, okay. So he yeah. had uh, like a, a swing. Bob Orchestra uh, band and his he's really good like I really liked his to the point where I hunted down his entire discography oh. and got it so I was pretty impressed with some and, of the, and stuff. is that where you came across oh. Celine no yeah I don't know it that, was in that a that bag pretty, okay I mean, Celine yeah, was in the yeah, bag yeah. that's it anyway you know you got Andy Williams Ray Conniff <laughs> Celine Dion. That doesn't nope. matter. That, you know, nope. Which one of these does not I will keep. Yeah. I, I will keep one of these <laughs> One of these vinyls, though, I will tell you, uh, just because it's nostalgic for me and, and my great-grandmother. Uh, in this stack is the soundtrack uh, for Dr. Zivago, which is a phenomenal oh, cool. movie. If anyone's seen, not a monster movie, but a phenomenal classic film. Yeah. Um, but I used to watch that with my great grandmother when I was a kid on the big dual cassette or dual VHS. Like it took two tapes to be able to there watch the go. whole film. Oh yeah, I remember that. Okay, yeah. I, I, my bad. I'm sorry right, to interrupt that's you your, there. Interrupted no, with you. Titanic yeah. was on two crap. on two VHS yeah. cassettes. Did I, did, yeah. did, I never <laughs> owned it. Yeah. Never owned it. I think he's got that upstairs. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I even said I even brought up at work. Somebody put a meme up and work and or, or a gif up in our little Teams chat, and it was from. Uh, from that horrible movie and uh they were like saying good morning and it was like some picture from it and all my reply was worst movie of all time <laughs> oh man so all right <laughs> so let's jump into it provide him with suitable weapons weapons of divine temper a helmet a shield a sword find and fulfill your destiny the myth the magic, the mystery, the majesty. Destroy Argos! Let loose the last of the Titans. Metro Goldwyn Mayer presents Clash of the Titans. The good, the evil, the danger. The daring. How may a mortal man face and defeat the Kraken? <laughs> Clash of the Titans. The combat. The courage. The splendor. The spectacle. Clash of the Titans. Starring Harry Hamlin as Perseus, Judy Bowker as Andromeda, Burgess Meredith, Maggie Smith, Ursula Andress, Claire Bloom, Sean Phillips, Flora Robeson, and 
Laurence Olivier as Zeus. Before history, beyond imagination. Clash of the Titans. This is Charlie with Give Me Back My Action Movies. And Dan. Join us every two weeks as we dive into the classic action movies of the 80s and 90s. That's right, Charlie. But we also take a look at some of the current films out there that still has those nostalgic feels for us. Exactly. So make sure you find us on all your major podcasting platforms. And check us out over on Facebook. We have a group where the conversation's always going 24-7. We're having a good time. I think so. I'll be back. Clash of the Titans. This is our Valentine's Day movie, um, which is suiting. And so this is not. This is a movie about well, a lot of Greek characters that you probably know. Um, if you haven't seen Clash of the Titans already, uh, we are doing the original, not the remake, with Sam Weatherington. It came out in like 2010, 2014, something like that. Um, but so, anyways, um, this movie is based around Perseus, the son of Zeus, the older brother to Hercules, um, who was cooler than Hercules, in my opinion, but. You know, that's here nor there. So, anyways, this yeah. movie, let's do run down pretty quick. Kring Acrisius. So, if I'm going through some Greek names, I apologize. But of Argos, he imprisons his daughter, Danaea, in an attempt to prevent a prophecy uh, that her child will bring about the demi- his demise. Okay. Um, so, pretty much his wife, Danaea, or I'm sorry, no, his daughter, Danaea, Zeus, uh, uh, had some relations with her, okay, and uh, um, which well, let's give a, a disclaimer real quick. Okay. We do keep do pretty clean movies, um, but I do want to let you guys know there is brief nudity in this film. Um, so please heads up before that. This is, I mean, it's not it, it is probably as cl- as classy as it can be. It deals with uh, Danaea breastfeeding Perseus as a child, uh, as a baby. So, um, but just a heads up, there's brief nudity in this movie. Um, yeah. so anyways, uh she's got a baby and it's Perseus and <laughs> it's also Zeus's. Um, and so she's got a baby. Yeah. And so he decides he's going to dump her uh, and uh, Perseus in the ocean to, to die, you know, so that he, she wouldn't bring about his demise. Uh, totally pisses right. Zeus off. And Zeus says, well, you're going to die anyways. And sticks the Kraken on Argos. Um, and so Perseus goes to which him. in a roundabout way, the, the prophecy was fulfilled. Yep, was fulfilled. So, I mean, he does. Yeah, he just, it was by his own hand, just like Pharaoh. <laughs> yep, <laughs> it's just like yep. Pharaoh in the, in the, in the Bible. So, so uh, Danaea and Perseus, they survive. They float to the uh, island Seraphos, uh, where Perseus grows into adulthood. Uh, at the same time, you have a character named Calibos. Uh, Calibos um, was a spoiled, uh, rebellious son of Thetis, who was. Uh, uh, the sea goddess uh, next to Poseidon. Um, and he was supposed to marry Princess Andromeda, um, uh, the daughter of Queen Cassiopeia, um, who we all, if you don't know, uh, was prude and uh, totally screwed her people over. But uh, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> yeah. So Zeus um, decides no uh, and uh, banishes Cass- uh, uh, Calibos and actually turns him into a deformed... Uh, yeah. Because Pan. cannibals killed killed his herd of Pegasus, yes, Pegasus sisters, yes. and just there's only one left. So yep. that was that was one of his, uh, for lack of a better term, I guess his disc- indiscretions. Yeah, and that was enough yeah. to make Zeus mad. So Zeus banished him, yeah. um, and then made him a monstrous pan satyr like creature, um, and where he lives in some swamps. So Perseus grows up. He ends up coming to Joppa, and uh, he um, finds out that he is uh, the son of Zeus. Zeus drops some cool weaponry and armor for him um, to make sure he is safe because Zeus spoils his kids. Um, Mm. And then uh, Perseus ends up finding and meeting Andromeda face to face. Um, and falls completely madly in love with her and tries to rescue her from Calibos. Well, a lot of people have been trying to marry Andromeda, but in order to marry her, they have to solve a riddle. That riddle comes from Calibos because Calibos was supposed to have Andromeda. Um, and they fail, and if they don't pass or solve the riddle, uh, they get killed. And so Perseus is like, I know what to do. He's the hero, and so he's in love with Andromeda. So he goes, he ends up actually attacking Calibos cutting off Calibos's hand um, and comes back and wins Andromeda because he guesses 
the poem. And the poem, the answer, it deals with a ring that is on Calibos's hand that was a gift from his mom. And Calibos is very mad, goes to his, his mom, is like, no, this can't happen. I want revenge. And so... Uh, uh, Aphrodite, or sorry, uh, his mom says, okay, boils down to it. They've got so many days to sacrifice Andromeda because Andromeda's mom is like, oh, she's more beautiful than Aphrodite. And <laughs> you just don't do that to the gods because it pisses them off and they want to kill everybody. So they have a certain amount of time to um, sacrifice her. If not, they will release the Kraken and they will destroy all of Joppa. So Perseus is like, there's got to be a way to save Andromeda. How can we kill her? Well, we know, or we don't know, but maybe these three witches do. <coughs> Excuse me. Who can't see. They share one eye to be able to see. So Perseus goes on this adventure, finds the three witches, and says, how can I kill the Kraken? And the only way to kill the Kraken is with Medusa's stare. And for those who don't know who Medusa is in Greek mythology, uh, she was a beautiful woman uh, who pissed off another god, and you just don't do that. And so she was transformed into the Gorgon, uh, the sn female snake creature. She has snakes coming out of her head and a snake body, um, and she was locked up in this temple, and the worst thing about her is as she stares at you, she can turn you to stone. So Perseus goes after Medusa, ends up finding Medusa in what is one of the greatest scenes in this movie and terrified most people, at this, yeah. you know, kids at that that age. Yeah. Um, yep. He cuts off Medusa's head, goes back to Joppa. Oh, yeah, and you fight some awesome scorpions uh, at one point <laughs> in between all this stuff. Goes back to Joppa uh, with Pegasus and ultimately has to fight the Kraken. Uh, to save Andromeda, which he does. And Zeus is like, ha ha, my son's the man. And end of story. Um, so just, yeah, so there's a, it's not exact from the Greek mythological stories. They get married and live happily ever after. Ha yes, yes, okay. they do. Um, oh. But um, it, it's not exact. Actually, um, the it's, sequels no, it, were way more exact to the actual myths than this one was. But that's neither here nor there. But anyways, yeah. it was still a phenomenal movie. Uh, now, this movie, of course, was directed by a guy named Desmond Davis. He is a director from the UK. It was written by Beverly Cross. Um, this was produced by Ray Harryhausen and Charles Sneer, um, which, of course, this has got those two guys written all over it when it comes to the special effects oh, yeah. and the production of the film. Because it's, I mean, it's so much like Jason and the Argonauts and the Golden Voyage of Sinbad and you know those type of films. Um, of course, it stars Harry Hamlin, Lawrence Olivier, uh, Judy Bowker, Maggie Smith, Burgess Meredith, who was a last-minute yeah. choice, which is great because the, one of the guys at MGM is like, no, we're not hiring some other dude. We're bringing Burgess in, and Burgess is a great addition to this. Um, and, of course, special effects handled by the great late Ray Harryhausen. This was actually the last film Harryhausen did, and yeah. I think it's some of his best work. It came out in June of June twelfth of nineteen eighty one. Uh, had about a fifteen million dollar budget and actually ended up grossing seventy million dollars worldwide. Second highest grossing movie of the year uh, that year, next to I think it was Indiana Jones, if I'm not mistaken. That I believe sure. that's true. Not yeah, true. yeah. I, I so. think I'm. You know, I re, I'm. I'm going. I saw that as this at the movies. I'm trying to remember what came out at that same time. This was a great time to. Go see these kind of movies. I mean, it was just so much good stuff out there. Oh man, this, this is time period. This was one that I you know? wish I could have seen in theaters because I remember seeing this as a young kid. Actually, and this is not one that Mark introduced me to. Nope. This was one my mother introduced me to, oh, wow. and uh, was actually worried. I'm like, with Mark getting COVID, I'm like, oh no, we've got to do this because we got a lot coming up. And I was like, I may need to call my mom and be like, hey, if Dad can't okay. make it, okay, okay, let's 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 get this all oh, out here right. <laughs> I turned your mom on to the movies. Thank oh, you very okay. Much. So, okay, so so this is still okay. This is still all thanks to Mark. Yes, um, yes. So we we appreciate that, all Mark. Right. A great great movie. Um, it, it got actually kind of a mixed reception. Uh, and as of today, uh, yeah, uh, I yeah. mean, uh, back then, I mean, I mean, uh, Siskel and Ebert both gave it like three and a half out of four stars, got yeah. a lot of praise, but then it also got a lot of mixed reviews as well, because this yeah. did come out, you know, after Star yeah. Wars, after Superman, and you've got this stop motion effects in this yeah. film. Yeah. Um, now, all these great movies that the, the, the special effects had already surpassed what 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 this movie is. But, you know. For the people that this audience, the, you know, this movie is for a certain audience, and it it hit a home run for that target audience. It did, it did, and it actually, know. yeah, 
excuse me, the movie was supposed to be a, 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 a bit more brutal um, than what we got because they had yeah. uh, this was originally going to be done. And most of it was shot in Spain and the UK, but this is going to be a major UK release. That's why you have mostly, you know, United Kingdom actors and actresses in this film. Um, <clears throat> that um, they over there, their rating system's done differently, and it was at back at the time it was like a U rating or an A rating as far as the type of audience that could see the film. And Beverly was wanting an A rating, so that you know they kind of like a PG um, rating yeah. here on this side. But they had to take out several scenes from the movie. Now, these scenes were never shot but because they, they sent the script over first. Um, and one of them included the Kraken actually killing Pegasus, uh, ripping Pegasus into pieces. Um, they ended up having to take it out. Uh, there was some additional uh, nudity that they said had to go as well. Uh, I guess when they brought Andromeda up there at the end and tie her up to sacrifice her to the, to the Kraken, um, she was supposed to be naked, but they're like, nope, can't do that. So, so there was a lot of things they they cut out of the initial script uh, to make it more PG or A rated as it was over there at the time. Um, yeah. But it did extremely well, and this movie has got a huge following. Uh, this movie did spawn several comic book adaptations, several comic book series. It even got two sequels, uh, or a, a, a remake and a sequel. Um, with Sam Weathington, Clash of the Titans, and Wrath of the Titans, which we might get around to doing at some point because those are great movies too. Um, yeah. Wasn't it done in 3D? The first one, yeah, yeah. yeah. Clash of the that was one. That this was, one? No, the no, first, no. The 2010. The, yeah, the 2010 yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, it was shot yeah. in 3D. Exactly. It, it was during that boom when everything was like 3D all of a sudden again. Right. You know, it, was, yeah. it was like 1985 all over or something, you know, which I'm right. sorry. I mean, I love the 3D, the modern 3D, but nothing beats like wearing the 3D glasses and seeing Jaws come through that – that 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 yeah. glass tank and Jaws three, <laughs> yeah. or the or Jason throwing the spear. And what was it? Uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. Part th- yeah. three or whatever it was. Part three D. Part three. It was yeah. called Part three yeah. D. I mean, yeah. that was the big thing back then. Like I, the red and blue glasses. Like, give me that. I'll take that. That was just more fun um, than what we get today. So, anyways, um, great, great movie. Um, let's find out what you guys think about it, Ruben. Um, in this this movie, I actually saw it in the theaters, so it has a nostalgia feel for me, right? Because uh, eighty one, I was still, you know, I wasn't quite a high schooler yet. I think I was in the ninth grade, getting ready to go into to high school, which were down here it was ninth grade was still was uh, was still in junior high. You weren't at the high school yet, at least back in my day. So I remember going with all my friends to go see this, and it was man, we were just. We loved it, you know, and like I was saying, in that time period, you had Superman, Star Wars, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, all these, and then this came out, and, and yes, the, the the special effects are nowhere near what those movies were, but at the same time, it was great, because I'm, I'm a big fan of the Sinbad series, I'm a big fan of the Jason and the Argonauts, you know, all that stuff was, man, I eat that stuff up, so to me, that this movie just checked all my boxes as far as what I like in a movie. So I like the special effects. I thought they were great. Uh, yeah, it was an end of era because uh, I don't know if there's any more stop mo- You know, there was limited stop motion because there was even stop motion in Empire Strikes Back. So when people say, well, stop motion is dead. Well, really? It was an Empire Strikes Back. So um, it wasn't really, but it was not going to be a main component of movies anymore. Yeah, um, if not mistaken, this was coming on. I think they called this one the the end of the era. Like this was the last film where the majority of the special effects were stop yeah, motion. Stop motion. Yeah, yeah. I think this one was pretty much the end of a of an era of, of stop motion. But there's nothing about this movie that I don't like. You know, I know they took some liberties with the with the with the you know the mythos of the whole Greek mythology thing. You know, and one big one is you know. We studied Greek mythology in school, so I, you know, I knew some of the, some of the things were not they, you know, like Pegasus sprung from the blood of Medusa in in, in the in the myth, which they kind of included in here because Medusa's head gets thrown in the water and then Pegasus comes shooting out. We assume it's the original Pegasus, but how do we know that? You know, that's not really made clear in the movie, right? So, um, you know, but I mean, I and I love the creature design. I, I loved cannabis. I, I cannabis. 
I'm sorry I said the cannabis. There's not 420 yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, cannabis, I loved. Um, uh, Medusa's Medusa's design was just. Oh, it's amazing. You know, just, just I still. Oh man, I still prefer I mean, this oh. Medusa over the the 2010 Medusa. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's just, just I was just in awe of that. I mean, I thought that was just the coolest thing ever. I thought Medusa was done so well. Um, the the actors were pretty top notch. I mean, you didn't have you know this wasn't just a cast they just kind of just threw together. This was this was a pretty good cast, and uh, and I thought they did an excellent job of putting out, taking the myths here and there and putting together a great story. Because let's face it, this is a story that's been retold. You know, probably hundreds of times in movies, but they took a little bit of all of it, put it together, and I I think their product that came, that they got out was 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 a pretty good product. Um, it's except for that brief nudity, it, it's very family friendly. I think. I mean, it's not. It's not even the the blood. You know, when there is blood involved, it's not realistic enough. I guess would be the word. It's not realistic enough to scare a kid, I think, in my opinion, especially today's kids. You know, it just it just wouldn't do that. The blood looks more like a man. I don't know, velvet like a like a ice cream. Yeah, it's, it's melted or velvet ice cream. Yeah, it's yeah. a thicker type of deal. So it's not. It's it's a little cartoonish, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that as as far as being able to view the movie. But there's one thing that bothered me about this whole film, and maybe you guys can can verify this because I couldn't find nothing. I've seen this movie probably literally hundreds of times. And I could have swore that when he killed Cannabis, that there was a there was a cut, there's a scene where they cut to him and, and he was back to being a human again. But maybe maybe I'm just remembering it wrong. Do you guys remember so anything I, like I, that? I don't remember. I that. don't know. No. I don't know. Okay, so maybe it was just me. Maybe it's just me or maybe I saw a TV version one time that maybe was edited and that was in there. I don't know, but I was waiting for that shot and it never happened. I rewound it. I looked at it again and um, I watched the HBO Max version, by the way. I don't know which ones. I mean, that's only there's only one version out there as far as I know. Yeah, yeah, there's only and, one. Uh, yeah, and it wasn't. And as far as that, I'm going to just throw in a quick Blu-ray review. It wasn't that great. The, the You know, I've seen plenty of Blu-rays that were a lot better than that. But um, from reading on it, I read that um, it was just the way it was shot, and that that's you know that's what they had to work with, and that's it. But it's not bad, but it's not the best either, right? So if you want to go, if you're expecting to go get, go out and get the Blu-ray and get a beautiful picture, um, you know it, it's just not going to happen. Um, it, 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 but it's still good enough. But yeah, there's not really not. It, it, there, I can't think, and, and of course the Kraken. You know, oh, the that was an incredible so creature. So yeah, good. that was such an incredible. And we only get we we don't get to see him long enough. If you ask me, I would have liked to see that opening scene when he when uh, when Zeus six the Kraken on on that city. I would have liked to seen him destroy more of their city rather than the flooding and the tidal wave and and all that other stuff. I wish they they would have prolonged that. I kind of understand why they didn't because they wanted save it for the money shot at the end of the movie. But uh, I sure would have liked to seen a little bit more destruction, <clears throat> excuse me, out of that. But that would be my only complaint. I would like to see, you know, what does every monster movie fan complain about? Oh, there's not enough monsters, right, right? Yeah, you know. But this one, I mean, the the giant scorpions are great. The two headed dog, I forget his name for some reason. Oh, it starts the, with the, a D. Uh, um, yeah, the, uh, I can't remember off the top of my head. But man, that two headed dog battle, uh, Dios Quilos. Yes, there you go. So, man, that battle that they 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 go up against him, and, and man, I tell you what, he tears them apart, and that I mean, it that's just a great scene. Um, and then of course the ba battle with Medusa was great. You know, I mean, well, the cat and mouse game with Medusa. Let's yeah, call it that because yeah, it yeah. wasn't really a battle. More it was accurate. a cat and mouse game. Yeah, it was a cat and mouse game with. It wasn't really a battle, but I, I love that battle with the dog, with the uh, the two headed dog. That was an awesome sequence of events there and um and i don't know which one i like more the scorpion battle or or the, the two-headed dog battle 
Um, I even thought the Stitch and Witches um, design, you know, they don't have any eyes at all. They're just, you know, they're just, there's just where their eyes are, it's nothing but skin. Yeah. You know, it's just like, the, I thought that was great. So it's like they were born that way or something. It's just awesome. So um, I don't really have any many complaints, but, you know, again, those that listen to the show know I put a huge, um, when it comes to stomps and whether I like a movie, nostalgia plays a big, big part on, on how I rate a movie. So um, just take that into consideration. Yep. That's it. That's all I got, guys. <laughs> Mark, what about you? Well, um, and I'm pretty much with, with Ruben on there. It just was a there's nothing wrong with this movie it's a great movie start to finish and um i i like the stop motion you know and um you, you look at and, and you look at the special effects like in star wars um compared to clash of the titans and for some reason that's why we're getting kind of a comparison between the two you know and, and to be fair before i'm sorry to interrupt to be <laughs> fair if you watch the original if you watch the original star wars not the special yeah. editions I think the special effects are just as wonky as Clash of the Titans. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's an advancement, the, but they're the, not really that great. Yeah, and the stop know? motion, while it's still as good in the Star Wars films, it's not Ray Harry Eisenwaldy. Right. right. Not my no, I, I, no I, it is not. You know, and, and so I, I kind of liked it a little bit more. And, uh, um, yeah, it was something that me and your mother started watching way back when. And just fell in love with that movie and watched it over and over and over and over. And uh, nothing about it uh, uh, is, was bad. Um, uh, you know, I, I think the big stars that they had in it made it uh, really push to be a great, great, great movie. Uh, yeah. And uh, a little bit of that was let down. I, I, I was always an Ursula Andrews fan. Oh, and, oh yeah, and, and she's in this movie, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. does she even talk? I don't even think she. No, has, she's not that much. She, no. Yeah, she she no, says she nothing. Say I think, and I'm thinking, wow, that's kind of crazy. But um, but yeah, I think they they did a great job making it so, uh, making it family friendly. Yeah, uh, to where everybody could watch it because you you do start learning about you know Zeus and the Greek gods at a yeah. young age. And so that's, that's something right, yeah. uh, that that's appealing yeah. to to young kids. Yep. And yeah. so I think overall, great movie. Um, I think I pat myself on the back for this Valentine. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah great so, one. Uh, All right, because it, I mean, it, it's really it is you know Greek mythology at its heart with a lot of their stories. I mean, it, it is a love story. I mean, it's about a hero saving the dame. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you know it, he had to to step up to the challenge and and save Andromeda. Perseus did. Um, you know, despite and and this is one of the things I do kind of like more about the 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 remake than this one was he was all about accepting his father's help. You know what I mean? Because Zeus is like, yeah, I mean, he was kind of like it, Zeus was all about Perseus. Right. I don't know what happened with Hercules. Yeah. He was like, I ain't helping you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you know, I mean, giving him the the, the sword, the shield, the helmet uh, that could you know turn him invisible and things like that. Um. Uh, so he did have the help from his dad, but still had to overcome the ob obstacles. Oh, exactly, um, yeah, big time. And I think it was. Sorry, go, go ahead. No, no, you're fine. You just keep going because I I agree. Um, and it's and it's one of those movies. Yeah, the remake I I liked it also, but uh, you kind of go back to old faithful. I would rather. Oh watch yeah, the yeah, original. yeah, absolutely. Uh, Overall, there's yes. no doubt, no yeah. doubt, eighty one. And so definitely the best. Uh, of the two movies, in my opinion, yeah. yeah, and also this this movie was a vehicle for kids that didn't know anything about Greek mythology, and and, and I would us yeah, I, I'm making a huge assumption. I think it got them interested. In well, it. well, this was the movie you that know? got me interested in Greek mythology because I mean, yeah, no, oh, I watched so the, the Young Age, and this is what yeah. introduced me to these characters and things like that. So, I mean, and same here, I have no complaints on this movie, really. Um, well, I mean, I can nitpick one thing, but um. The cast is fantastic. I mean, you got a great yeah. UK cast. You, you, you know, talk about Ursula. Yeah. Um, you know, Lawrence Olivier is in this. I mean, Maggie Smith. Uh, Maggie Smith. People today may know her from. Oh, she was uh, Wendy in Hook with Rob yes. Williams. Yes. Um, she's in this. Um, I cannot remember the guy's name. It plays Poseidon to save my life. Uh, he was in Jason and the Argonauts as well. Yep. 
Um, yeah. So I mean, yeah. fan Burgess Meredith, of course, Burgess Meredith is absolutely great. Um, and then honestly, I mean, I, I've got to say, when you include a cast for this type of movie, you have to include Ray Harryhausen as part of that cast because his creatures yes. are characters more than anything. Oh, yeah. He brings them to life in such a oh, way that definitely. I mean, he really does. Uh, you know, Bubo, the the mechanical owl that Zeus sends down to help, you know, Perseus is awesome. Like that is one of the most fun characters. I was actually very disappointed that we didn't get him in full in the remake, but uh Bubo's a great character. I loved as a kid. Um he did a fantastic job bringing the Kraken to life. The Kraken looked awesome. The Kraken may be my, it, well, it's not my favorite Harry House in creation, but it's, it's definitely my second favorite. Like I love the Kraken. He did a phenomenal job with it. Um and I love the special effects films. I mean, if I if I were to have to pick which is the favorite? Oh, the Ymir okay. from Twenty Million Miles to Earth. Okay, okay. like without <laughs> question. Like to me, that's the best special, the best stop motion that Harryhausen ever pulled off was Twenty Million Miles to Earth. And you can watch that movie because they have a colorized version now. Um, or it came out a few years ago. Black and white or color doesn't matter. Looks phenomenal. I mean, and I always revert back to the table scene when they've got the humor on that big massive table chained up, and you're watching him breathe in and out. That was the first film where he had perfected the breathing technique for the for the puppets. Absolutely phenomenal. You know, absolutely phenomenal. I love that movie. Um, and I just love that creature. The humor was awesome. But um. <laughs> totally lost train of thought. Thanks, Sorry, so Sorry. If, I, if I'm choosing between <laughs> modern graphics and old school like stop motion, I'm honestly, I'm for me personally, I'm going to pick stop motion at all time because it was way more of a hands on. And I'm not knocking computers artists, special effects artists in any way because what they do it takes a lot of time and they put a lot of work into it. But there was just something different. There's something different between clicking a mouse, drawing on a pad. Yes. Versus putting your hands on a physical model that they had to build from the yeah. skeleton to the clay mold and moving them yeah. literally n- like not, I mean, just centimeters yeah. at a time and picking a frame. And it was more so than that because all the backdrops and, and the way you bring the people into it, the whole process of how Harry Housen yeah. would shoot these scenes took so much time and was so technical. And he pulled off yes. such magical effects you know what i mean so there's just a a, a respect oh I yeah mean, i, I, I mean, respect the stop motion art and that's what it is oh yeah and I, I mean I, a huge i, I definitely know. miss it uh you know i mean one of the things uh, i'm trying to remember is he actually worked on star wars he did the rancor um i cannot right. think of his name right now he's a special effects uh stop motion guy he's, he's retired he was actually man if one of you guys could pull this up i'll tell the story that'd be awesome he was originally on um i cannot think of his name but he was originally hired to do the dinosaurs for Jurassic Park. And then and he was going to work side by side with ILM, the guys at ILM, uh, to do that movie. And he this was that was at the time that computer graphics finally changed. And the, the guys at ILM were like, look, this is what we can do. We could really pull this off and CGI all this stuff. And when they did it. Jurassic Park is known as the movie that killed special effects or stop motion. You know, Clash of the Titans was the end of the era. The the majority of, spe- of of stop motion animation ended with Clash of the Titans, but you still had stop motion animation years to, years later. You know what I mean? In little bits and pieces here. Well, the thing, you know, I mean, if you go look at the thing, the final scene with the alien, there's stop motion animation done in it from Rob Bot and his crew. But so anyway, so this guy, you know, he was hired on to do Jurassic Park. And then with the, the advancement of computer graphics, especially after Terminator 2, when it came to um, Jurassic, when it came to Jurassic Park, that killed it. That 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 movie successfully killed stop motion animation. And I cannot remember his name. It's going to drive me nuts. Hopefully you guys can find it while I'm talking. Um, it's not it's not Phil Tippett, is it? Yes. Yes, that's, that's it. Phil, Phil Tippett. Tippett. Okay. Phil Tippett. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so it's right. Phil Tippett. Phil Tippett, he's worked on, you know, like I said, Star Wars stuff. He's done a lot of great, I mean, phenomenal stop motion artist. When that happened, that changed Phil's life to the point that Phil actually went into depression. Um, I mean, wow. it, it affected his health so much. He was hospitalized at one point. Um, now, they did, I mean, ILM was awesome. They're like, look, we can pull off the graphics, but we can't pull off how these creatures work, you know, as far as, you know, the actual bones and skeletons of how they move and so they're like we need phil phil knows how to make these creatures come alive 
we can make them look good, but Phil needs to bring them to life. So I thought it was pretty yeah. cool that the guys at ILM were like, look, well, I know we're going computer and we're not doing stop motion, but we're not getting rid of Phil because Phil's going to, you know, so Phil, that helped him. But I mean, but th- that was major because that was the movie that killed his art form. And uh, he's yeah. done, a, he's done a, a, a few short films since then. Um, that's pretty cool. But yeah, Phil Tippett, that was it. Um, that was it. Okay. You know, I mean, so stop motion animation to me, it's just, that was just, it's such a classical, and that, to me, it lasted so long. I mean, you're talking stop motion animation came out in 1924. The first time we really saw some animation was 1924's Lost World, and that was Willis O'Brien. And then you move from yeah. 1924 to, I mean, all the way into 1993 when Jurassic yeah. Park came out. Okay, when Jurassic Park came out, all up until that point. So you're talking, you know, almost what 70 years of this being yeah. a staple special effects fart. Um, yeah. So I mean, for me, man, growing up with the films I watched and uh, the movies that, I, that we love, I mean, the, the Clash of the Titans. You know the the Sinbad films. You know Seventh Voyage, Golden a- a- Voyage of Sinbad. Yeah. Um, you know t- t- it came from beneath the sea, Twenty Million Miles to Earth, King Kong, Mighty Joe Young. I mean stop motion, Valley of Guanji. You know there's so many uh, that are out there. Jason and the Argonauts. That uh, to me I'm always going to pick stop motion animation, and this has some of the best stop yeah. motion animation that uh, Harryhausen pulled off. Well, I think I think you're like me. It's just uh, it has that. Sometimes you can have the best special effects, but Stop motion just gives you that feel that I think sometimes is missing in CG in CGI. That life, you know, you that just have life. that. Yeah, that life. There's just something, and I know. I mean, yeah, King Kong 1933 versus King Kong 2005. Which one's more realistic? Yeah, the 2005. But which one of them has you know? I mean, King Kong. I I, I say it over and over again. I'm going to say it again. King Kong 1933 is is art. The whole movie is just a, a work of art. Yeah. And 2005, yeah, it's a work of art, but it, it too, and, and it, you know, but man, there's just something about, uh, you know, King Kong 1933 and, and, and the Sinbad, you know, and the Jason and Argonaut movies with all that stop motion that's just, you know, and maybe it's my age, but there's just something about it. I just truly respect a stop motion artist because – Yes, like you you mentioned it, you know. Yes, you know there there's a lot to it, you know, with the with the software and CGI and all that. But there's just something about the way they did it back with with the stop motion yeah. that I respect that that work ethic and that patience, the patience that it, that is needed to do that. Um, I I just can't imagine doing that myself. I don't have the patience for it. I'd never be able to do it, you know. So right. I think I have a respect for them. Um. And and of course nostalgia, you know, nostalgia has a lot to do that with, with that too for me. So, yep. um, yeah, I I, lo- I love stop motion, you know. And, and think about it, I mean they they wanted to bring that rancor to life in the original trilogy, and I'm you know, and from what I read, they went the little bit I read, they wanted to go with a suit. They wanted to do a suit actor, and and they they kind of went back and forth, and they said no, there's no way, it's got to be stop motion. Yeah, they and know, it was uh, awesome. Stop motion you know. in a in a puppet and a hand puppet and a puppet yeah, yeah and a hand two puppet. Ways yeah. um, it turned so, out great. Um, yeah, it turned out great. A rancor is you know no spoilers, but it's not the last time you see it in the original trilogy. You see you see it again. Yep, <laughs> no spoilers. Yeah. Yes, you do. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, you guys got anything else on this film? Uh, nope. I am good. All right. It's stomp down rating time. All right, and collectively, um, this got pretty high rating, man. Four and a half oh, stomps yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, from yeah. us. This mm-hmm. movie is a classic for an absolute reason, many reasons, many, many reasons. Great story. Uh, I'll just recap. I mean, great story that they did with this one. Great actors, great acting, and top-notch, amazing special effects from Harryhausen and his crew. I mean, for being Harryhausen's last film, he went out with a bang, I think, on this one. So, yeah. Uh, well worth watching. I highly recommend. I mean, I think all three of us would agree and oh yeah, highly recommend I, this film. Oh yes, I, I would. yeah. In fact, it's on. You know, I still have it on. It's it, you know, if it's if I catch it or if I feel. I mean, I have the 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 Blu-ray also, but I was hoping HBO Max had a better. I, actually, I don't have the Blu-ray. I have the DVD. I was hoping HBO Max had a better 
and it was the Blu-ray version, but it was it wasn't much an improvement from the DVD. So if you guys see the DVD out there, pick it up because it's just the, the Blu-ray is not that big. It's not a huge jump in quality. Yeah, as I'm... far as that goes, and um, so, but man, yeah, this movie nostalgia is written all over it, you know, especially since you know, I, I, so as I start every time I watch it, I, I go back in time and I'm sitting in that theater watching all this stuff for the first time. And uh, I mean, I've seen other movies like the, I think, uh, Sinbad and the, the Eye of the Tiger is that the name of it? I hope I got it yeah, right. Now. Yeah, I get yeah. confused with Rocky Three. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one in the theaters too. Yeah, so that in the theaters too, but it was t- toward the end where like these like Sinbad was in the theater that was kind of like you knew it was going out of you know it was kind of on a downtrend in a in a part of town that you knew it was not going to support a theater for very much longer. So this theater would get movies like um, uh, the one with about uh, Nostradamus. There was we they would get all the you know the Poseidon adventure all the yeah. disaster movies would go to that theater for some reason that theater would pick up all and they would do the Sinbad movies that and that one that did and, and there's one here in the middle of town called the Airs Theater that would do they would do the Godzilla and they would do King Kong and they would do Sinbad sometimes so um, this movie actually was at, uh, I, I was actually in the Sin- Cineplex so. It, it was big time. It was mainstream back in the yeah. day. D- deserved so, the special and, treatment. Know, and it, it, it yeah, really it, it didn't go to that theater. Yeah. And it does. It does. It was just, it was just great. And, and, and the fact that the, the that the, uh, they took a chance and said, yeah, well, I don't know if you call it a chance. And they said, you know what, we're going to do this. We don't care that all these other movies came out, you know, with the, with the, with the green screen. I, was it green screen? Yeah. I guess it was green screen back then. I don't want to say blue screen. But it was green screen, you know, with Superman and all that. Yeah. Because I can still remember watching um, the show Kids Are People Too. I don't know if you guys remember that show. I don't. <laughs> you don't remember? It's a show on, on ABC called Kids Are People Too. And when Superman came out, they, they showed, well, this is how we made Superman fly. And they showed the green screen and, and, you know, and of course it was like a green block and somebody would get on top of it. They got a kid to go on there and pretend they could fly too. Um, you know, so I remember learning about that special effects on that show. But uh, this one, the stop motion is just, I, I mean, I just, I'm so glad that they decided to go ahead and do it, even though, you know, the consensus was it was a, a dead, a dead art, I guess. Yeah. And uh, I'm so glad they did it. And I'm just glad they cast Harry Himlin uh, as Perseus. Cause uh, one of the studio's choices was, would have been terrible. <laughs> That's absolutely really terrible. who, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh Lord! No. Yeah, yeah. Lord, MGM are was some of the producers. Of MGM were like, "We want to get Arnold," and they were like, "No, because why not?" And this is literally why they said, "There's too many lines." Like he would have to say All too right. much. So like, no, we're not doing Arnold uh, as Perseus. So, uh, but Harry Hamlin did a great job. And uh, so, I mean, we highly recommend this movie, guys. I mean, for uh, you want a, a movie that's got a great love story that your lady will enjoy, but yet you can still yeah. get your monster action on. Clash of the Titans is the way to go. Yeah, definitely. Yes. So, yes. Um, check it out. So, very good. All right. It's time for the new segment, man. It is time to test our might. I'm sorry, test <laughs> your might. <laughs> test your might. Test your might. Test your might. All right, so second time doing test your might, and uh, me and Mark unfortunately lost last uh, the last episode, and yes, we, we had did. to uh, uh, bend uh, to the will of one Ruben and yes. watch Captain yeah. Chronos Vampire Hunter. Um, <laughs> Mark, I'll let you talk about okay. your experience with that one, <laughs> and then I'll give my two cents. Okay, on this. yeah, that movie sucked. Did I, he give I, you? Co- I, oh, wait a minute, Captain Chronos gave him COVID. Oh yeah, that's, that's, what, yeah, right. yeah, that's, go, cool. that's what it was. <laughs> so, terrible, terrible movie. Um, kind of confused on one part of the movie. So you know, he finds the girl there at the beginning, and yeah. Carolyn Monroe, Monroe, and then she stays with him, and then they're kind of making out, and yeah. she steps back, and she's got blood on her lips, 
Yeah. He's got two holes in his neck. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I'm trying to think, okay, she's a vampire? You know, and, but it never really. I thought at first it was him. I couldn't, figure, yeah, yeah, I couldn't the, figure the, it out. Like the, so the vampire in this movie, sorry, you go ahead. You, you talk about this. No, well, it's, yeah. and, he, and he had talked about that he had been bit by a vampire and survived. Yeah, how, the, how did that work? Yeah, like, and so I, 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 went, I was trying to figure out if that was his survival when she bit him or that was previous to it. I really don't know. I'm really confused. Um, <laughs> yeah, I stomped it with a one. That was more generous than me, dude. Uh, I stopped that one with a big whopping nothing. Uh, I did not enjoy that movie. I ended up texting the guys after watching it. I kept trying to put it off. Like I kept trying to find, because I watched the trailer for it, try, I kept trying to find something else to do. And then I was finally like, certain. Oh. My wife was like, don't you need to go watch that other film? I'm like, yes, I do. I don't want to. And I text the guys. I'm like, well, that's an hour and a half of my life. I will never get back like at all. Or an hour and 31 minutes. You know, and, and, you know, and if, if you listen to when I picked it, it was kind of like I was just trying to think, what's the worst movie I've ever seen? And then I, I remembered that one. Oh, my God. Please you, yeah, tell I me. Just remember that Tell one. me this is the worst one you've ever seen. Because if it is, we got movies to look forward to at least. You know, because I have it, no it Got to go up you know, from here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was totally unprepared, and I just kind of oh went to my gosh, memory bank, man. and that one popped in. Yeah. So, I, and I was mistaken at first. There's a vampire movie with David Carradine, and for some reason, I was thinking this was it. I was like, cool, I'll get David Carradine. Uh, nope. Uh, yeah, no, 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 not that no, movie. Not at all. Um, and so hey, it's funny because I'm, I'm going to tell you a story about that movie. The first time I ever saw that movie, I was sick, and I had the flu, and I had a fever. So, I saw that movie basically just almost as a hallucination that, that's, that's that's how it was that is yeah. a horrible hallucination is what it is <laughs> yeah I, I, it was like a I, i've never like i've seen plenty of vampire movies in my in my time and uh a lot and a lot of hammer film vampire films and hammer film makes some yeah, great uh, vampires because this is a oh, hammer film dude, movie. yeah you can't compare uh, that hammer's uh, great like i look at this and i'm like <laughs> okay this is a hammer film what in the world happened because this is the most boring vampire movie i've ever seen in my life yeah. Okay, like, yeah. and the vampire in it doesn't suck your blood. It sucks your age by kissing you. Um, and it's supposed to be like a swashbuckling <laughs> movie. This movie was terrible. Yeah. Special effects were terrible. Um, the, the breakdown scene with his his buddy starts with a G. I can't even remember who's got who's a hunchback and those dudes in the bar are making fun of him. And then he gets back to his house. He's like, oh, they were making fun of me, blah, blah, blah. I, I, God, I cannot stand this movie. Um, and things just don't make sense. Like, why were they putting leeches on him? Why was she? She said oh, yeah, at one point, put yeah. leeches on on uh, on Kronos. I don't I, I don't get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> you know, so and like I'm like, okay, look, you know, it starts and and then and Caroline Monroe shows up at the beginning. Yeah, she's yeah. In, she you know she's in the the stirrups or whatever, yeah. and he cuts her free, and then she follows him, you know, for the rest of the movie till the end, and he's yeah. like, okay, see you later. Um, which was so weird because I'm like, okay, so are y'all falling in love? What's going on? And then he just drops her right there at the end. It's like, I'm out, um, which is just ridiculous. So, but like, so, you know, so Carolyn Monroe back in the day, you know, I mean, you, uh, uh, Ruben talks about, you know, Phoebe Cates, the, the teen heartthrob. Carolyn Monroe was like yeah. not the teen heartthrob. She was like the man's woman, you know, yeah. back, you know, I mean, yeah. she was in uh, uh, Dr. No, um, the James Bond film. Uh, of course, she's in the Golden uh, Voyage of Sinbad. She was in Maniacs. Yep. She was in um, uh, Doctor Fives Rises Again, and she was in this. I'm like, okay, cool, because she's a great actress. Like Carol Monroe is a great actress. I, I mean, everything I can think of, I've seen her in uh, At the Earth's Core was really good. She's great in those yeah. movies. So I'm like, cool, okay. At least we, at least we got one good actor. Or I'm sorry, actress for the film. What? The, what? Yeah. She did not act. That's all I remember. Right? T- truthfully, she's what's most memorable about that movie. Oh my gosh, she annoyed me because I'm yeah. like, you're 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 not acting yeah. at all in this yeah. movie. Like she this is horrible. Yeah. So there was nothing good about it. This was a terrible experience. Uh, it made me <laughs> question my life when it was over with. So um, <laughs> if if you've gone through and you have seen every vampire movie that's ever been made in the history of time and have not, you know, want to find one you haven't watched and you haven't seen Captain Kronos, don't watch Captain Kronos. Uh, just, just, just go repeat some other other terrible vampire movie that you've seen. So, all right, let's jump into the next round of the monster trivia we've got. Of course, now our buddy Charlie Chase from Give Me Back My Action Movies. You heard the commercial for them earlier in the show. Um, he has sent us some new questions. And, uh, of course, this is how it works. 
three questions, multiple choice answers. We will do the questions first, then we'll do the answers after we do the questions. And the winner gets to pick the worst movie they can think of to torture <laughs> the loser with. So, And I've got a great choice. I hope I win this one. So, Okay. Question number one. Are you guys ready? Go for it. Ray ready. Harryhausen has a complete disdain for a certain movie monster. Who is that monster? A, King Kong, B, Godzilla, or C, the creature from the Creature from the Black Lagoon? I'm going to say Godzilla, B. I know the answer to that one. I just know that one. Number two. I'm, I'm covering my paper because I'm afraid Mark's cheating. I'm not cheating. You're a no. cheater. What actor did a potential movie studio want to play? I just gave you guys this one. Oh, Crap. Yeah, he did. did a potential movie studio want to play Perseus in the Navy World Class <laughs> Titans film before they would distribute the film? A, Arnold Schwarzenegger. B, Lou Frigno. Or C, Sylvester Stallone. Well, you guys are welcome. What was those numbers again? Yeah. What was that? A, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Okay. B, bad. Lou Frigno. Right. Or C. Yeah, you don't even need the rest of them. Yeah. I gave you all that one. Dang it. Yeah. I may have screwed myself over with yeah. my knowledge of movies. Uh, okay, last question. What is the name of the first documented use of stop motion in film? A, fun in the bakery shop. B, the cameraman's revenge. Or C, the Humpty Dumpty circus. Wow. What is the name of the first documented use of stop motion in film? Okay, that was A, fun in the bakery shop. B, the cameraman's revenge, or C, the Humpty Dumpty Circus? Okay, I'm going to say C. Do we have our answers, gentlemen? Yep. Yes. All right. So, number one, who did Ray Harryhausen have a disdain for? The answer was B, Godzilla. Yeah. So, was Guess known to turn me. away fans wearing Godzilla shirts, wanting to uh, have his autograph. Ray Harryhausen actually did that. He would turn fans away if they had a Godzilla fan, Godzilla shirt on. He'd be like, nope, not signing your stuff. I okay. figured, I figured it's because it's suit versus stop motion. So, so King Kong was out because King Kong was his inspiration. Yeah. So, oh, I knew yeah. it was well, a King Kong. Yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, and it was the, it was the, yeah. well, not the true follow up, but the, you know, uh, yeah. My Joe Young, he yeah. worked yeah. with Willis O'Brien. Number we all got two. that one. Who? who yep, yeah, it's it's a it's Arnold Schwarzenegger. So you guys you guys know you guys get that one. Um, okay, number three, the first documented uh, stop motion. I knew this one. Oh. C, the Humpty Dumpty Circus. Oh, I got that one too. <laughs> so I got all three. I got all three Anybody right. Else? Reckon I missed one. It'll be me. Oh, Mark. Uh, oh, okay. You so want to flip a coin, Tristan, on who gets to pick the movie? Then you picked the last one. I'm picking this one because I had one on the, oh. on the banks for Mark. That I'm so ready. You get to watch. I wish I, I'm gonna put a drum roll effect right now. You get to watch Zontar, the thing from Venus. Zontar, the thing from Venus. Yes. So oh, that right. is, I think it was may have been John Agar's last film. Um, and boy, is that is more dumpster trash than even Mr. Science Theater 3000 would, wa would watch. So I'm excited to find out how much you like Zontar, the thing from Venus. I will find out. It is on the Plex. Well, where's my, uh, where's my trophy? I won. I don't get to pick a movie. You picked the I'm last time. <laughs> I don't make it big two. We did. We did tie. What What would have been your we choice, did. Ruben? Actually, no. I'm going to save that for okay. uh, next week. Next, yeah, I'll next save time. it for next week. I've so, got two movies that I was going to say, so I'll save it. We'll see what if I win next week. So, so next week, if it's another tie, like Ruben, if me and you win again, you get to pick. Uh, but if it's okay. like you know, Ruben, let's say Ruben and Mark win, uh, Mark, you'll get to pick because you haven't picked one yet. So, all right. Yeah. So sweet. That was test your might, and uh, hopefully you guys learned some stuff. Um, that was those were good questions, Charlie. Um, yeah, they were. I liked them because yeah. I knew all the answers. I kind of wish I wouldn't have given uh, one of them away to you guys during the show. But all right, okay. if you wouldn't have, yeah. I, I mean, but truthfully, if if you wouldn't have told, I would have guessed them only because. He played Hercules. That, so, well, yeah, you know, he played Hercules. Um, I'm like, the movie well, studios are mine would have been wonky that if way. If I didn't know ahead of time that Arnold was actually, uh, Ryan Pictures wanted um, him to play the role, I would have, out of those choices Charlie gave, I would have went with Lou Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno also played really? Hercules. Yeah. Um, but yep. as far as oh, the yeah, role of Perseus, yeah. I would have thought Lou Ferrigno would have been a cooler choice um, than, oh, yeah. than Arnold. Oh, yeah. Probably than because, Arnold. again, because, you know, well, you got to talk and no. I don't know. Lou Ferrigno, uh, you know, 
you wasn't like Schwarzenegger too. I mean, you had, I mean, Lou Ferrigno is because he's death. So he, yeah. he didn't exactly speak very clearly. And yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger just had a heavy accent. You know, that's all there was to it. Yep. So. So. All right, guys. Well, sweet. That rounds out another episode for us. Now, we do have an announcement. We want to let you know we have a special episode coming up next week. That's right, a third episode for you guys we're super excited for, and uh, we want to make sure you guys do pay attention and listen to this one. We are going to do a special episode review in an upcoming movie. You may have heard of it. Our brothers Charlie and Nate over at Give Me Back My Horror Movies uh, did an episode on this. We are watching H.P. Lovecraft's Witch House by Bobby Easton, and uh, they will actually be doing a quick interview with Bobby, uh, who is the director of the film, and James Brenton, uh, who did the cinematography on the film. Um, so we will be giving you guys an extra special episode next Saturday um, with The Witch House, or I'm sorry, just Witch House, um, where we will review it, and we definitely want to support these guys. I mean, anybody who's an independent creator of any kind, uh, we want to help them out. And i got to give props to James Brenton. I mean, we are working on... Uh, something very special um, that is coming down the pipes, and James have provided some good uh, insight uh, for me, which is really cool. So thank you, James. And so I definitely want to support James and Bobby. Um, so look forward to that next week. Again, that's going to be HP Lovecraft's Witch House. We will review that and then do a quick interview with Bobby and James on the show. And then following up in and out the um, – Month of February, we have our giant monster movie, and Mark picked a great one with this, and that is Rampage. Oh, I, yeah. I know a lot of people don't like it. I dude, like it. Ah, it's, it's fun. I like, like it. It is yes. popcorn movie extraordinaire. You know, So I'm pretty excited to do Rampage. Um, and, of course, also, guys, go check out um, – Everybody on our um, uh, podcast network, give me back my podcast, uh, you know, all the shows, give me back my action movies, give me back my horror movies, uh, Good Beer, Bad Movie Night, and then Wolfie D and Jimmy Street's wrestling show. We've got the Give Me Back My Pro Wrestling fixing to come out. Make sure you can eye out for it. And then uh, check us out on the social sites, man. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, uh, join, jump on there, join us. We, I mean, there's tons of us talking every day. Uh, we have a great time with that. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. We do now have an Instagram page. Go over and check that out because you will get extra content on on the Instagram page that you cannot get elsewhere. So, uh, guys, thank you all so much. We have a lot of cool things coming, and we will start announcing these cool things that are coming in the next few episodes. So just stay tuned, and uh, thank you all for listening. This is Sludge. Right Mark. Yeah, yeah Ruben and Tech. You want to live forever? Now what? But no matter what happens, Godzilla will.